I use more or less three reference setups for reviewing equipment. Time and time again you have asked me to tell more about these references. Ok, here we go. Before I start throwing brands and model numbers at you, I must first clarify the function of the reference equipment. The advertising world has changed the meaning of the term reference somewhat, I think. If they promote quality equipment as reference equipment, it is usually meant as the best there is. If I mention my references, I mean the equipment I use to judge equipment or compare other equipment against. Apart from some active speakers, I have not reviewed loudspeakers for some years now, since I decided to focus on digital audio and file based audio. So I can't claim my speakers are the best or the best for the money. They certainly are of sufficient quality to get the job done. About the same goes for the amplifiers. For the digital front end, anything in front of the amplifier, things differ. As I said repeatedly, digital audio is developing at an impressive speed. Only a few years ago everyone used computers to drive a DAC over USB or even over SPDIF. On audio shows often laptops were used, sometimes even without measures to get bit perfect digital signals. The audio quality varied from fair to rather poor. To many it was clear that file based audio was inferior to CD and SACD. Of course there were exceptions, like the squeeze box that sounded better but is to today's standards a low end solution. Using audiophile power supplies like the S booster brought some improvement. Another exception was Sulu's that initially sounded rather poor, especially for the money, but after being bought by Meridian now sounds great. Lynn was also active with file based audio quite early, but since I have never reviewed the system, I can't say how good it was. Both Sulu's and Lynn systems were rather costly systems, about or over 10k in euros. Initially I used the squeeze box, later on with S-Booster power supply for all the streaming. But I switched to the Sonos Connect when that was introduced. The software was far better than the squeeze box at that time and the sound about equal. Intrigued by the small board computer Raspberry Pi, I discovered special audio grade sound cards by Hi-Fi Berry. When combined with a low nose power supply they offered sound quality that equaled or surpassed the squeeze box touch. I now use a Raspberry Pi 3B with Allo Katana Player version 1.2 with isolator as a source for my setup 3. Alternatively, I use the Allo US Bridge feeding the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt DAC. When Blue Sound was introduced, it made a lot of sense to me. It has the ease of use of Sonos, while it sounds quite a lot better than the Sonos Connect. The extra price compared to the Sonos is worth every penny. See my reviews of the subsequent models on my channel. The easiest way to find these reviews is to type Beekhuizen Blue Sound in the search field. The Blue Sound system supports about any streaming service, can work with your NAS or computer share, and a model that offers internal storage is also available. I use the Blue Sound Node 2i in my setup 2 along with the Aurelic Ares Mini, which has end of life status now, and the LO US Bridge signature the latter to drive the Cord Mojo. Prior to the introduction of Rune, Raspberry Pi based streamers had all kinds of streamer software. They were all based on the MPD, the music player of Linux. Some of them were fine to use, like Volumio, others weren't. Logitech Media Server, the system on which the Squeezebox works, is now open source and can be used with Raspberry Pi based systems too when the appropriate software like iPeng is loaded into the Pi. Streamers by hi-fi manufacturers often use DNLA or UPnP AV based systems or have developed their own system. DNLA and UPnP AV server software often was slow and developed mainly for video 
with photos and music as side dish. Then I discovered Minim Server that does music exclusively and can handle more than just the basic metadata fields, like Composer. I still use Minim Server for testing DNLA and UPnP AV streamer. But when Rune was introduced, that became my default music server. May 2016 I discovered that the Sonori Micro Rendu network bridge brought affordable streaming a giant leap forward in audio quality. October of the same year I reviewed the SOTM SMS200 network bridge that was of about the same quality but somewhat cheaper. Only one year later the SOTM SMS200 Ultra network adapter was introduced. It costs two and a half times as much and sounds impressively better than the standard SMS200. Mind you, all three send digital audio to the DAC over a USB Audio Class 2 connection. I missed the opportunity to review the original Aurelic Ares that at that time was reviewed very well by my colleagues. But December 2018 I reviewed the Aurelic Ares G1. This is a full fledged streamer that offers not only USB but also SPDIF and AES EBU outputs and has about the same quality as the SMS200 Ultra. When I dropped the 2000 Euro equipment limit, I was together with a number of viewers very curious how well the Ares G2 performed. As you can see, the digital front end evolved a lot over the last four years or so. Furthermore, there will be more than one device in one setup performing about the same function, like the Blue Sound Note 2 and the Aurelic Ares in my setup 2, and the Allo Katana player and Allo US Bridge in my setup 3. This way I have several methods to review comparable hardware and software. Take for instance the Blue Sound Note 2i and the Aurelic Ares Mini. They are both in the same price bracket but have different software and sound character. The Ares Mini has higher resolution but tends to sound somewhat harsh when connected to equipment bought by a more general public. The Blue Sound then is a better choice. Many streamers nowadays can also function as Rune Endpoint, in which case the audio part of the streamer is used but not the cataloging part. After comparing the sound quality of the player's own system to the sound of the Rune signal, I usually play music from Rune. Unless it would sound less of course. Time to sum up the equipment used in setup 1. The loudspeakers are the German Audiophysic Scorpios. Apart from offering very high sound quality, they also have a high sensitivity of 91 dBs at a watt 1 meter. This makes them very well suited for my AudioNote Sorrow SE amplifier that only does 15 watts per channel. It is heavily modified by my ex-colleague Peter van Willeswaard, with better potentiometers, capacitors and tubes. Its extreme resolution makes reviewing a breeze. Next to the audio physics the REL B2 subwoofer is connected to the speaker terminals of the audio node. The crossover of the REL is set to approximately 32 Hz. The MyTech Brooklyn Bridge DA converter can be used as a Rune input directly but can also receive SPDIF directly from the Aurelic Ares G2, receive USB Audio Class 2 from the SOTM SMS200 NEO or receive SPDIF from the Mini DSP SHD Studio Dirac processor. That can also function as a Rune endpoint but is normally fed from the Ares G2. By the way, only the devices in use are connected to prevent grounding problems. The Aurelic Ares G2 streamer can be used as Rune endpoint and as a streamer in its own right. It is connected to the Uptone Audio Ether Region Audiophile switch with the SOTM SNH10G as backup. Then the cabling. AudioQuest Robinhood loudspeaker cable, Crystal Cable Diamond and Grim Audio SQM and TPM interlinks. AudioQuest Diamond CAT7 Ethernet cable and AudioQuest Diamond USB A to B cable. The MyTech DAC is powered by the Syntex Extreme power supply as is the Optron Audio Ether region. When the SMS200 Ultra is used, it is powered from an S-Booster BOTW PMP Eco MK2 power supply. 
I used two main filters, a transparent power isolator 8 and an Isotec Polaris. But these are not used in a regular way. I use them only to connect switch mode power supplies to, to prevent their noise leaking into the mains that feeds the audio equipment. Think of the TV, the switch mode power supply of the mini DSP and so on. The Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers are supported by a RHEL T5 subwoofer and both are connected to the speaker terminals of a Marantz KI light amplifier. As described several sources here, the Blue Sound Note 2i, the Aurelic Aries Mini and the Allo USB signature streamer with Cord Mojo DAC. Interlinks are the Siltec London which are end of life and the loudspeaker cable Kimber 4PR. Linear power supplies for the Aries Mini and the US Bridge Signature are by S Booster and Allo. Here the speakers are by more than short, the Avant 902s. They are no longer available but are fine for me. The amplifier is the lovely NAD C316BEE that is now followed up by a Mark II version. It is impressively musical for the money. If I feel like it, I can easily add the RHEL T5 subwoofer to the speaker terminals of the NAD. The source is now the Allo US Bridge with AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt, Interlink is the AudioQuest Red River and if USB is needed, I use the AudioQuest Cinnamon USB cable. Loudspeaker cable is Kimber 2PR, linear power supplies by Audiophonics and Allo. The music server, set up at the third floor, is centered around an Intel NUC with M.2 SSD system drive running Rune Rock. The music is on a 10 terabyte Western Digital Red Drive in a USB 3 housing. No special power supplies here. Since the Rune Rock also makes the music storage available as share to the network, the non Rune streamers use that share as music source. I also use two very simple Synology DS120J single drive NASes, mainly used as DNLA and LMS music server, and a somewhat more upmarket Synology DS1819 Plus with DX517 extension holding together 13 drives. The latter is mainly for backup but can be used for experimenting with music servers like Minim Server 2. The NUC and the NASes are connected to a Zistel GS1900-10HP switch that feeds the AccuFox Accu switch in the setup 2 and 3 that are also on the third floor. From the third floor to the living room at ground level, a connection is made over fiber optics. Downstairs it enters the ether region switch and is routed to the second switch for normal network traffic. The clean side of the ether region feeds the streamer or network bridge I use in setup 1. Although I don't enjoy listening to headphones, I do have some. An AudioQuest Nighthawk and a DALI IO6. I also have a pair of in-ears, the Sony MDR EX700 and the Argon EP4002. I do use them to test the functionality of a headphone output but I refrain from giving an opinion on the sound quality. Too little experience, too little enjoyment. Of course this is a personal matter as is all equipment I use. As every piece of equipment is a compromise you might agree with certain choices more than others. Take my AudioNote amp. As it is now it offers very high resolution but not the ultra tight bass some class D amps will offer. Some will describe the mids and highs as soft while I soften find solid state amp sound toward aggressive, depending on the quality of course. The NAD M10 will be more to the liking of solid state lovers while the name Unity Atom will be more to my taste and again one is not better over the other. Since I understand this, I try to describe it rather than judge. Due to the pre-selection I do, all equipment I review is worth its money. So it, you're always safe for 75%. The last 25% is taste and thus for you to find out. That's why I normally don't do buying advice. I don't know your taste. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. There will be a new video as always at Fridays 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.